how did the American Indians and Europeans interact with each other? This homework video is intended to answer this question. The Spanish explorers came as conquistadors. They wanted to conquer, and they wanted to claim this land for Spain. Over in Europe, when you would conquer another group of people, there was fighting involved. And you can see that this conquistador is wearing a metal helmet and a metal uh, armor in order to protect himself. He sees himself as a warrior, a soldier. So when he comes in and he sees these Native Americans, his purpose is to conquer them in order to claim this land for Spain. And many of the Native Americans they took as slaves. And when they conquered, they enslaved the Native Americans who lived there as prisoners and as evidence to show that they conquered this region. The Spanish also came in with Catholic priests. The Spanish were devoutly religious and they wanted to set up missions in order to convert and educate the Native Americans living there. They saw the Native Americans as uneducated, and sometimes they would even try to convert these Native Americans with the point of the sword. You convert to Christianity or you die. So sometimes these conversions of Native Americans were not on their own will, but they had been forced by the people who were coming over in an effort to convert anyone who lived in North America to become Catholic. And some of these missions are beautiful. They're set up all over North America, and some of them still exist today and can be visited. As you can see, these are some interactions between the Catholic priests and the Native Americans living in the region. With the Spanish, there were also germs that were brought over. And these germs were um, new to the Native American communities. Their antibodies were not trained or prepared to fight off these germs that came with the, Nat with the Europeans. So when a Native American would get that germ, his body did not have the antibodies to fight it off. And often, these diseases actually killed millions of Native Americans. Um, this primarily is what wiped out a huge portion of the Native American population because they were unused, they weren't used to the germs that the Spanish and English and French were bringing over from Europe. So um, often Native Americans died. It was a very sad genocide. And um, he was one of those who said to them that the church and the, was the ruler and the superior of the world. So he really wanted to convert these Native Americans to his religion. And he would take uh, the Native Americans' wives and children to make them slaves. Um, it did not end well for the Native Americans who interacted with Coronado. Many of them were killed. and. He never found his city of gold that he had wanted to, but he did explore a lot of what we call the Midwest, including New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. All right, moving on to the French. Their interactions were a bit different than the Spanish. So they traded. They were famous for trading guns for furs. And you can see these pictures show the Native Americans have these furs 
and they are eager to trade with the Native Americans for a invention that they don't have but they see as a very powerful weapon. And you can see these trading posts began um, being the place for the So here with the French we have an image of one of these trading posts and eventually the French fur trading posts became towns and then cities like what we know as St. Louis, Missouri, Detroit, Michigan, and New Orleans in Louisiana. So the French set up these fur trading posts in order to interact with the Native Americans and you can see the blue areas on this map were areas that were explored and claimed for France and all of those little stars are considered forts or trading posts and I kind of blew up this map so we could see that Fort St. Louis becomes St. Louis, Missouri, Fort Detroit, and Fort La Nouvelle Orleans, or New Orleans, were all of these French trading posts that become major cities today. Here's kind of what um, a trading post would have looked like back in the 1600s, 1700s, and today, the city of Detroit, St. Louis, Missouri, and there's the arch in St. Louis, famous for that city, and New Orleans, Louisiana, as uh, we know, they are the home to the saint. Now, with the English, the English come in 1607, and they begin setting up permanent settlements like what we know as Jamestown on Native American land. Now, what's different about the English is they are not there just to explore. They are there to set up permanent colonies. And just a few years after the settlement of Jamestown in 1607, they send women to start families in 1620. They take the land around their fort and they begin farming and setting up homes, setting up family farms. They end up growing tobacco. They're using this land as something permanent. They're not going away. And the Native Americans begin to realize this. They see little towns starting to creep up. These towns are not made out of tents that are going to be movable or be removed anytime soon. These are permanent homes that are staying right there. So the interactions between the Native Americans and the English has constant tension because the Native Americans realize that the English are not going away. And you can see that the English are trying to make contact with the Native Americans in order for their survival. However, the Native Americans are always very uneasy about the English um, continuing to build, continuing to use the land for farms. Now with the English, the English traded tools and the Native Americans traded their knowledge of farming. And you can see the Native Americans grew corn, beans, and squash. These were all new plants, new foods that the, na the Native Americans could teach the English how to farm. Uh, most famous is Squanto up in the Plymouth colony teaching the pilgrims how to properly fertilize the soil in order to get a good harvest and a good crop. And you can see that in this regard, these trades were a positive interaction. for themselves. So conflict continues and we see that the Europeans take advantage of their trust by, by drawing up treaties and contracts to take the land. Um, they see this as their own property and they want to force the Native Americans off the land that they are now claiming for themselves. So I see this no trespassing sign as proof. Um, this is where conflict comes in 
at Jamestown as well as many other places across North America where English, Spanish, and French are starting to settle and stay. Um, we can see sometimes it was tragic the way that the Native Americans would fight off, burn homes, and terrorize the English, the Spanish, or the French that were there. But in their own defense, um, the English were not communicating and not being honest often with the Native Americans. Now, mind you, there was a language barrier, but there were many treaties that would be drawn up between the Europeans and the Native Americans. Peace treaties, uh, you can see the peace pipe there as the Englishman is reading aloud a treaty. However, think about it. Do you really think the Native Americans understand that these treaties basically were saying that they had to move off of their land? This is a really interesting find. You can see the marks of several um, Native Americans. They're, they don't know how to write English. They don't know how to write letters. So they would have special marks that indicated their signature. And these marks are just some of the ones that we find on. and establish the land. So the conflict with the Native Americans was over ownership of the land, and you can see the Native American saying, this is my land, and you see the, the explorer saying, no, this is my land. Tribes became pawns in the conflict between Europeans, and we see um, you know, the tr peace treaties were worth nothing um, despite their promises, um, despite medallions that were given, uh, by the government. A pawn is the weakest piece in the game of chess and it can be um, overcome by any of the superior other um, pieces in the game. And you just see the conflict continues. Language differences allowed Europeans to cheat Native Americans out of their land and resources despite Indian Sign Language and that kind of thing. Um, when a peace treaty, treaty was signed, it was very unclear to the Native Americans that they were giving up their land in order for the Europeans to establish uh, farms, permanent settlements. And again, here's a really interesting um, marks of different uh, Native Americans who signed treaties. the Europeans. As we know, uh, conflict continues with um, the Native Americans' just perception of, of, of the English. Remember when John White comes over in 1585, we saw that he drew these watercolor paintings of the Native Americans who lived here. And his depictions um, might have brought some fear um, into the eyes of the English when they saw his paintings. The way he depicted them was as uncivilized, and they did not know God in the way that Europeans knew God, and so this was a huge motivation for Europeans to go over and try to convert Native Americans to Christianity in the hopes that they would quit their savage ways, their uncivilized ways. We also know, though, that the Europeans brought deadly diseases to America that killed millions of Native Americans. And um, here's just a few more pictures of the conversion uh, experience between uh, Native Americans and the English. 
sometimes it was more friendly, other times it was a little bit more uh, severe in the way that um, the Christians tried to bring Christianity to the Native Americans. Cooperation with the natives. Um, we have Europeans sharing guns and metal tools. Keep in mind that metal was a resource that Native Americans did not have in their natural environment. And so when they see these tools um, that are made out of metal, they are very eager to trade what they have in order to obtain some of these precious, um, precious metals that they see as useful. And then cooperation with the natives. Um, Native Americans shared farming techniques with the settlers. We know that corn, beans, and squash were very successfully grown in the, in the United States. And so um, the Native Americans were skilled at farming. They had been providing for themselves for thousands of years. And so um, by sharing some of these um, skills and techniques with the Europeans, it did ensure the European survival.